On the sixth day of October, Halloween gave to me six doorways bending, five children yowling, four zombie bulls, three haunted mirrors, two monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey there, everybody, and happy October 6th. Uh, we are almost finished with our first week of our 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, you know, it, it's always fun to get through the movies, but also uh, time is fleeting, folks. Um, and speaking of fleeting, uh, this has nothing to do with that. I'm Bo Ransdell. I am the head editor-in-chief of Legion Podcasts, and... Uh, this is the official Legion Podcast's uh, 31 Days of Halloween list, because uh, I said so. Um, so there you go. Ah, power. Absolute power. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, we've had, uh, as you've, if you've been following the episode so far, we've been talking about a lot of haunted stuff. You know, haunted mirrors and haunted houses and, and haunted people and grudges and all that stuff. Now, this is the, the granddaddy of, uh, of haunted house movies. Well, maybe not. You could probably make an argument for uh, the old dark house, uh, and, and you would be right. But in terms of uh, you know what we think of as, as classic haunted house movies, it doesn't get more classic than The Haunting from 1963, uh, the movie which was uh, directed by Robert Wise, uh, written by Nelson Gidding, uh, based on, of course, the uh, the Shirley Jackson novel of uh, the title "The Haunting of Hill House," and it is uh, it, it shot in black and white, which was a, a choice that Robert Wise made. Robert Wise, who uh, uh, had taken some cues from Val Luton, uh, who did you know Cat People and Curse of Cat People, and uh, a lot of a lot of what are ostensibly kind of schlocky horror movies from uh, the forties and fifties. But when you watch them, they're kind of hypnotic and elegant, and and they uh, elevate uh, the the subject matter in a way like cat people kind of shouldn't work, but it does because it's beautiful and that pool scene is still frightening. Um, so Val Luton uh, definitely influenced the haunting, uh, which like I said, shot in black and white at a time where you didn't have to, but Wise wanted to capture you know, that kind of lighting to be able to, and, and he says uh, in an interview, it's actually harder to light a black and white film than it is a color film. Uh, but it was worth the extra effort to do so for The Haunting, which looks just gorgeous. It is a beautiful film. Um, stars our old pal Russ Hamblin from uh, Twin Peaks. Dr. Jacoby himself is a, a fairly early role for him where he's sort of the, the young playboy, uh, the hipster of the group. And, and what it is, is you have uh, Richard Johnson playing Dr. John Markwood. Uh, he has arranged to investigate Hill House, which is purportedly one of the most haunted houses in the world. Along with, the, uh, with his group comes um, Julie Harris, who plays Eleanor Lance, who is a woman who has been uh, sort of hounded by her mother, taking care of her mother for a long time. Her mother has just died. She believes that her family is kind of bilking her out of what she deserves after years and years of service to her mother, giving up her own life in many ways uh, for her ailing mother. And what what ends up happening is when she gets to the house, when she gets to Hill House as part of this group kind of investigating hauntings, she starts to believe that the house is is targeting her. In, uh, in in some really freaky ways. Like, it, down to writing messages on the wall. Um, and there's a... Uh, a when, that message, as a matter of fact, says, uh, Help Eleanor come home. Which can be read, Help, comma, Eleanor come home. Or it could be, Help Eleanor come home. And, and that is the crux of the film is that there are two readings of The Haunting. One is that this group of people goes to a haunted house, uh, scary shit happens, 
which leads to a tragic ending. The other reading is uh, a bunch of people go to a purportedly haunted house. One of the women loses her mind completely, resulting in tragedy. And for all the talk recently of things like elevated horror, you know, that's that's become a real uh, a, a, a real word of the day in the horror community uh, and even outside. Right. Like it's a way for critics to say we don't like a lot of horror movies because a lot of them are schlock and we don't care, <laughs> which is understandable. I don't I don't always disagree with that, uh, that evaluation. Um but there are also movies like, you know, in recent history, The Witch and Midsummer, and, you know, even The Lighthouse. I know I just mentioned uh, back-to-back uh, films uh, by the same director, but they're so good. Um, but, you know, that kind of thing, right? Like, uh, It Follows and, and The Babadook and Hereditary and uh, the list goes on and on. Um And I think that the haunting, you know, people forget that even at this point in 1963, there were plenty of schlocky movies. And the haunting, when it originally came out, was not considered a classic by any stretch. It was it was sort of, yes, here's another uh, spooky movie. This one seems a little better than most. It was financially successful uh, for the most part, Uh, did pretty well. But it wasn't by any stretch a classic. It, it kind of only became a classic because no matter what generation you're from, when you watch The Haunting, you're like, it's a pretty good movie. Of uh, it is, uh, it's like I said, it's beautiful to look at. It's filled with great performances. Big shout out to Claire Bloom who plays uh, Theodora in in the film, and is uh, you know one of the things that's kind of famous about The Haunting is it's an early film that depicts. Uh, not so subtly a homosexual character like Claire Bloom is clearly hitting on Julie Harris in, in this film and Julie Harris is clearly not into it and there was a scene that was more direct in in terms of their relationship uh, that was cut from the the film one of the few things that was ever cut from the movie but you know one of those things that at the time you know Robert Wise said look it, it was just too heavy-handed uh, there could have been some pressure from the studios, but Robert Wise never suggested that. Uh, he said it was all, you know, their decision to kind of excise some of the, uh, the the more direct references to Theo's homosexuality. But you know, again, it's there. There is you. I I suppose you could miss it, but if you're an adult, you won't. Um, <laughs> so it's it's kind of uh, you know, it was a bit avant garde in that way. Um, and, you know, it, it is a the perfect example, maybe, of a movie that never shows you anything. You know, it, it's very paranormal activity in, in some ways where, to, you know, yes, this movie borrows heavily from paranormal activity. Um, no, but I, I mean that, you know, what is more frightening than uh, seeing the thing is not seeing the thing. And there are some great moments. One in particular, uh, one of my favorite scenes in in horror movies uh, throughout the ages is this scene where uh, Julie Harris, as as Eleanor, is in bed and she hears uh, a booming sound. And she's talking to Theo, who, who she believes has come into her room and climbed into bed with her because there's been an incident like this before. And Eleanor went to her room to to get some comfort and and, uh, protection, potentially, from whatever is making this booming sound in the hallways. And so she lies in bed, and she clutches uh, this hand in hers, and she's, you know, giving this sort of running commentary of, you know, Oh, I'm so cold. Oh, Theo, you came into my room. Thank you, you know. It's a, almost this old time radio kind of discussion of, of what she's thinking and feeling and how terrified she is. And then as the booming goes away, she's like, you're, you're hurting my hand, Theo. You're let go. And then she rolls over and you realize, of course, no one is there. And the whole time she has been in the embrace of this something else. And it's really creepy. And then you layer onto that. Well, she could also just be bananas. And it, man, this movie, it just works. It, it, like I said, it, it is the first great example of this idea of elevated horror of like, yeah, there were 
you know, plenty of, of run of the mill kind of haunted house movies. Uh, you know, that Roger Corman kind of flavor, even though that's unfair. Roger Corman did some elaborate lush productions as well. Uh, those Poe movies are quite good, but, but that kind of thing, right? Like, you know, once filmmakers learned that it didn't have to necessarily be a good movie, it just had to be sort of titillating. And The Haunting came out in, in that era when that was popular. And and what it did was it established, you know, the, these great characters and this mood and this atmosphere. And, and this debate within the film itself about what is and is not real and what's happening. Uh, it's, it's terrific, you know. The Haunting is... Uh, in many ways a very cozy movie but that makes it sound like it doesn't have a bite and it kind of does it's a in in many ways it, it's a very sad movie um but it it the the house that they shot in is fantastic uh the exteriors are great it looks beautiful the characters are fun i i really like the fact that dr markaway in the movie is kind of an asshole and and is just concerned about like we are we are here to do a job, and Eleanor, if you're going to be a crackpot, we just got to get rid of it, you know? Um, not really concerned with her well-being in any way. And, and again, it's just uh, all these super interesting uh, characters talking to each other in interesting ways and revealing things about themselves. And there is also this uh, running voiceover where you hear Eleanor's uh, own thoughts uh, and and that also kind of leans into the idea that maybe all of this is just in her head and that she's just, you know, she's just crackers. So uh, sorry to use so many medical terms like that. But anyway, um, this is such a delightful movie to go back to. Um, I wouldn't call it outright scary. You know, that falls into what we talked about before on, uh, on, on this series about being a bit jaded and having seen a lot. And I've seen The Haunting a million times, so it doesn't really spook me the way it used to. But I love it, you know? It, it, it's not... It is not a chore to watch. No matter how many times I see it, I, I still find a, a level of craftsmanship in The Haunting that is rare. And it, it's just a classic movie. It's one of those that no matter how old I get, uh, no matter how many generations uh, discover this movie, there are always going to be people that look to The Haunting as... Uh, one of the great haunted house movies, and and it is, it absolutely is. It is, you know, probably top three on my list of these are the greatest haunted house films uh, that were ever made. That's that's it for day six. Uh, you know, if you haven't seen the haunting, please do. If you haven't seen it in a while, you should. You know, we're gonna get into some stuff uh, in, in here in the future. I haven't seen yet. You know, some some new releases and whatnot uh, will appear on this list. And so the front end of it. It's a little stacked with movies I love, uh, and I won't apologize for that. Uh, damn you listeners for making me feel guilty for watching movies I love. How dare you? Um, <laughs> anyway, th but uh, to that end, hey, thanks for listening also. Um, not only are you a bunch of uh, bastards, uh, but thank you. And, uh, and I hope you're enjoying this series. I hope you're enjoying Halloween. If you are and would like to share uh, what you've been watching and perhaps your own traditions and so forth, uh, drop me a line at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. That is plural for the number of podcasts uh, that we have. And uh, yeah, drop me a line. Uh, let me know what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're watching, how you're enjoying the season. Um, I can't wait to continue. There is some, some new stuff coming up. That is going to be super fun. So within the next week, we are going to be uh, we're going to be talking about some uh, some brand new hotness. Uh, but until then, everyone, uh, have a great uh, week, uh, continued work week. If this happens to be uh, your work week, uh, if not, enjoy your time off. Make sure you're watching some horror movies. Make sure make sure you're uh, you're you're keeping the holiday in your heart. And uh, and most of all, be spooky, everybody. And I will uh, talk to you tomorrow. Bye.